Hello, I'm Alice. Um, as you heard from Raphael, I work at, in the Berkshires at Schumacher Center for New Economics, and I'm the Berkshires Program Coordinator. And I'm here to tell you about Berkshires, which is our local currency in the Berkshires. Um, we start from the work of Fritz Schumacher, who wrote about how local production for local consumption is really the most economic way of doing things. Um, so, as you can see, we, we understand how local production can happen both in rural settings or in city settings, um, and we see local currency as a tool for getting to that place where we can produce more for what we need in a, in a region. Um, but when you're trying to produce more for your local region, you need specific tools, and for a long time now, our economy has been built in the opposite direction. It's been built for a globalized economy that's uh, a, an economy of exporting to faraway places and importing from faraway places. Um, so we need to start finding and building the tools that can allow us to have a local, a strong local economy. Um, and that means creating tools that give people the power to build that economy. One of these is the Delhi Dollars, which uh, was in the early 1990s in the Berkshires. It was an experiment in um, self-funding, self-financing of a business move from one location to another. And because the customers were very fond of this little deli, they were willing to buy ahead of time their sandwiches and you know breakfast and coffee. So then the the deli would have enough money to move to the new location, and then those customers could redeem their deli dollars later for things that they wanted anyway, ham and cheese sandwiches. Um, so our current example of a local currency is Berkshires. And Berkshires were issued in 2006 and have been going since then strong. And um, you can see that they're very beautiful. And I have a bunch in my wallet that I can pass around. They feature local heroes on the front and uh, local artwork on the back. And these are real money, so I need these back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep one. <coughs> um. <laughs> so what we have in Berkshires <coughs> is a place-based currency. And there are lots of different kinds of alternative currencies, but we're uh, proponents of place-based regional currencies. Um, and what we've done with Berkshires is we've defined an economic region, and we call it the Berkshires. It's not, it's not only in Berkshire County, Massachusetts, but it sort of uh, flows out around the edges into New York State, <coughs> Connecticut, and Vermont. Um, most of Berkshire activity takes place in South Berkshire County, around Great Barrington. Um, and so this has sort of defined a region, and it helps people think about um, the, where they're getting their goods and services, and um, seeing if they can focus it more in one region so that then they're strengthening the local businesses there. Um, so it's also distinguishing the local businesses uh, in South County because only local businesses take Berkshires because a McDonald's is not going to be interested in a local currency. Um, and it builds loyalty between these businesses and citizens so people will identify the special businesses, the local businesses, and keep going there. And they'll sort of turn away from <coughs> the big businesses such as McDonald's or chains. Um, and we're actually pretty fortunate in the Berkshires because we have a lot of small businesses and we have very few chains. Um, so the way it works is that you can go to a bank, bring your dollars, and get Berkshires. And so the banks actually have Berkshires in their vaults and they, if you bring $95, you'll get 100 Berkshires and you can uh, spend them just like $100. So you actually get an increase in buying power when you take Berkshires out of the bank and then you can go spend them at businesses and the businesses can keep spending them um, at face value. And it, as long as they keep doing that, they don't 
lose anything, and if they go to the bank, then they're going to lose that 5% because it's the same exact exchange rate. So it's 95 cents for one Berkshire. So that's just an incentive to keep people using Berkshires um, and keep the money flowing around. Because when you keep money flowing between local businesses, you're supporting all those local businesses. They're going to be, and local businesses already do support other local businesses, it's proven. Um, but when you're doing that, you're keeping the money within the community, which means you're building up your tax base, you're creating more jobs, um, so it's always a good thing to do that. Um, we have five local banks, and local banks are hard to find in the U.S. these days, but we're lucky enough to have five local banks that we work with and 13 branches of those banks. So people can go into the banks anytime and get their Berkshires there and otherwise you could get paid in Berkshires if you had a business you could say I accept Berkshires and you can get paid in Berkshires. Um, so we also have 400 businesses that accept Berkshires and um, it's pretty remarkable how diverse these businesses are. We have lots of different um, different kinds of businesses. We have doctors and dentists, landscapers and um, grocery stores, toy stores, clothing stores, um, so it's a really good way, good diverse choice for where you want to spend your work shares. It's not just concentrated in one sector. Um, and so we have, what we've achieved so far is that we've gotten businesses and banks used to using a local currency. And it's really pretty simple and not that hard for the banks to do. They enjoy having more people come into their banks because it gives them more visibility. It also distinguishes those banks as small and local banks, and so people are going to like them more too. Um, and so we've also established that, I mean, in people's minds, that local currencies are legal, and there's no problem with them with the U.S. government. We have been cleared by everybody, all the way up uh, the line, and. Um, and we've shown that people, that you can print your own currency that really includes your values. So you can see community, economy, ecology, sustainability. They're printed right on our currency. So that's what we're, that's what we're representing when we're spending these Berkshires. Um, and it's representing the pride in our community with the local heroes that are on the front and the, the uh, beautiful paintings on the back. Um, so, so far, we've really created a successful buy local program. And I think in 2006 was sort of a turning point where people started to think about buying local. And um, Berkshires were right there. And we've really gotten people used to it. So now it's sort of old hat. Yeah, of course I'm gonna buy local. Um, and, and Berkshires are a tool for doing that and proving, you know, proving that you're proud of your local businesses and you want to support them. Um, let's see. So I have a bunch of directories here with our 400 businesses, if you want to come up and see those later. And um, let's see. We also have these beautiful cards that we're using in banks so that people can gift Berkshires and then um, you know, you can give Berkshires to somebody who hasn't heard about them before, and then they can go out and find a business, a local business that they like to spend them in. Um, but really, that's not, so our, our really beautiful buy local program is not our end goal. What we want to create is an independent currency that will hold its value, not be tied to the US dollar, and will actually represent local production in turnips or carrots or maple syrup or energy. Um, and, and so that's our end goal. And to do that, we can start a loan program. And we're working on starting a loan program where we're actually going to issue currency at the point of making the loan. So this will be only for productive loans. Um, and these will be focused on businesses that are import replacing businesses, so producing more for our local consumption, things that we don't already produce. So we'll be making import replacement productive loans. So you issue to a business so that they can produce more. So the classic example is for a farmer, 
in, with a IU issue currency so that they can buy seeds in the spring, and then they're going to produce a lot more than the worth of that currency. So basically, mm -hmm. that currency is going to hold its value and be rep it's representing all those carrots, cabbages, turnips, um, meat that that farmer produces. Um, the other part of why we need to start this loan program is because we're going to be then allowing the community to make decisions about who gets capital and what kind of businesses we need. <laughs> so that means that, because Ber Berkshires is a nonprofit run by its members and it's open membership to the community. So that means that the members of Berkshires can then, through committees that are working on the loan program, uh, decide which businesses should be funded. Um, and then those businesses will pe be producing the things that we need most or we want most in our community. Um, and then along with that, what we can build and what we really are missing in our community is uh, education around building businesses. Um, we have a lot of resources in our community with retired businessmen, people who have skills of business skill, business plan review, um, marketing, site selection, but we just, we don't really use that kind of those, that capital, that human capital in a way that helps our young people. So often our young people graduate high school and if they don't want to go to college, they don't have very many choices and they don't know how to start their own business. So with a Berkshire's loan program, we can offer mentorship and help with business skill, business plan writing and business skills. Um, and that will really build sort of the range of people who can start businesses in our community uh, so that younger people can start feeling empowered and then they can actually apply for funding in Berkshires. Um, so this will work because what we're doing is empowering local people. And local people are the ones who know what we need in our community. And, um, and they also can make decisions about who can get funding because they know the people, they know what we need, they know what kind of businesses will be successful and which people are going to be successful. Um, so just one example of a Berkshire's loan that we could make is um, to this farmer, Ted Dobson, who has, he runs Equinox Farm and he's been running it for about 30 years, really successful. Um, he supplies all the local restaurants, supermarkets, a lot of people at farmers markets, and he's, um, he knows his business. Um, but he also knows how his business could grow if he had a little bit of capital that was low interest. And um, so he has come up with this whole plan because, you know, the problem with Berkshire's loans right now is that if you're getting a loan from Berkshire's, maybe you can't buy everything that you need with Berkshire's uh, for that business expansion. So he says, well, that's no problem. I have a bunch of customers that are really, really supportive of my business. They always are coming to me. So I'm just going to turn to them and say, hey, can you help me out? I have all these Berkshire's because I have a loan that's really low interest. It's going to help me expand my business. Um, how many Berkshire's do you use in a week or in a month? Why don't you just buy some Berkshire's from me? I'll use the US dollars to buy the things that I can't buy in Berkshire's. And I can put in a better greenhouse system. And you are going to spend those Berkshire's anyway, so just buy them from me. So that's one way that he could then, he could put in underground plumbing that will help him to expand his growing season, expand, because right now he has to actually import greens in the winter because he can't grow them because it's too cold. But if he could put some heating underneath the ground in his greenhouses, he could have a much longer growing season. So um, that's just one example of a, what a Berkshire's loan could be. And that would be getting us to a point where we're actually independent from the US dollar and giving the people in the community the choice of, of who they want to finance and how they want their money to be issued. Um, so the, the money won't be actually tied to what the US government decides to issue for, maybe consumption or for war, or they'll be, the money will be tied to local production of things that we really need. Um, so I have Berkshire's and other, I have my card. If you have any questions, you can ask me probably at the end, but I'll let Deneen go now.
Okay. Unless you want to ask questions no. about Berkshire's. Mm -hmm. I'm asking for some technical assistance <laughs> here. So maybe I'll take some questions while the technical. Yes. Have you had any of the local governments begin to accept them taxes? Uh, we haven't yet, but we have the town of Great Barrington interested. Um, so we have to just go to Massachusetts, state of Massachusetts, and get clearance from the Department of Revenue. But we're going to work on that because that would be a great way to to expand the circle of who can, where you can spend your work shares. Uh, there is an argument made that that's really essential for the survival of an alternative currency. Um, the other question I have is. Um, are there, have, has the community experienced a net benefit such that people feel like there's a meaning, a, a, an actual benefit that is greater than just simply an ideological sense of betterness? I mean, are people motivated through actual uh, material benefit to these structures? Well, I think that people see that we have all these local businesses and they see that that's actually a material benefit to our community. So they see that Berkshires are part of that picture. And, um, and a lot of businesses, I mean, I just, I'm doing a series of interviews. Every month we're gonna interview a different Berkshires business and sort of get their story and why they take Berkshires. And I just did an interview with a local bookseller <coughs> and he said, you know, I love taking Berkshires. I wish more people would take them, or would bring them and spend them. Um, and I sometimes have to bring them back to the bank because I, I can spend them in places on my own expenses. I can spend them. But sometimes I just need to take them to the bank. And so that means I lose that 5%. But I don't ever think about it as losing 5% because instead of paying credit card fees, I'm getting cash. Um, and I know that keeping the money in our own local community is very uh, tangibly helping our community um, because the tax base is going to be stronger. We're going to have these local businesses that employ more people. So he says, you know, I don't mind that taking that tiny 5% because I don't ever think about it as losing something. I think of it as always increasing and, and bettering our community. How do you cover the costs of running the system, the printing, the administration, your salary? <laughs> well, right now it's a it's a research and development project of Schumacher Center for New Economics, mm -hmm. so we're funding it through grant funds, and that's how the initial printing was covered too. Do you envision the system being able to sustain those costs itself eventually? And yes, <coughs> as soon as I mean, once we can do enough for the businesses in promotion, in funding in um, mentoring, that they see it as a very beneficial system, then they will, it will be like the Chamber of Commerce. They can just pay an annual fee to be a member of Berkshires, and that can help cover the cost. I was just wondering, um, I mean, I know the sort of Berkshire ethos, so I'm not surprised that it's done well particularly there, but I was wondering if, if you have any stories of uh, people or places that were resistant at first and then got persuaded into this as being really viable and how do you manage that? Because in other communities, people will say, oh, this sounds like some hippie liberal, you know, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, it's taken off. Um, so do you have any sort of good stories or comments at least um, on the shift from resistance to acceptance? Well, I haven't been around so long because I was off at college when they were issued and then I only just came to Berkshire's in the spring, mm -hmm. so I didn't really see the whole trajectory, but I just there was just a new business that started this fall, and he's sort of a recent transplant to the Berkshires from New York City. He ran a huge successful restaurant, I mean a very successful restaurant in Brooklyn, and moved up to the Berkshires to have a farm, and, and then they started this business. So he sort of came from a <laughs> very, very different place and started his business sort of thinking like this is going to be just the same as any other restaurant and the first night they opened i went in and of course i asked if he accepted berkshire's he's like uh, what are you talking about uh, sure why not <laughs> so he sort of didn't get it but because he'd heard of it he knew lots of other people accepted it um everybody at my table said 
yeah, I have Berkshire's to spend right now um, <laughs> instead of a credit card. Well done. He said, <laughs> why not? I mean, he there is it's sort of like a of course, not with everybody, but a lot of people just see it as, yeah, that's a part of what we do here. So it is part of the Berkshire ethos. I have two questions. One is, can you give us an idea of how spread Berkshire's are and any data on what maybe like how many are in circulation, how many are used compared to the general like yeah. currency in circulation in the area. And my second question is if you for example go into a store and you want to buy the same item will a five dollar I don't know item cost five virtues? They do right now, yeah. So right now you can spend them just at face value equal to the dollar. Um, and we can keep track of how many Berk shares are in circulation because when you bring your dollars in to get Berk shares, they go into a bank account and they just stay there. They can't be touched. So we can see how many dollars are there. Um, so it sort of fluctuates how many Berk shares are out in circulation because we have a sort of strong summer tourist population that uses them. And so it goes up and down, but right now it's about 125,000 Berk shares in circulation, which is pretty small. But also, we're only 19,000 people in the Southern Berkshires, so it's it's still pretty good. And cumulatively, there's about 4 million Berkshires that have gone out into circulation over this last six years. Do you envision a time when you'll print Berkshires without the backup currency? Yes. I actually, I actually yeah. think we need No, to actually, that. totally. That's what the loan program's for. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deneen, and I'm actually from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Woo! Drove up six hours last night. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about local currency from a little different perspective because we are in an urban area, um, and I'm going to begin with a short video presentation of um, with me and Bob, who is the founder of Equal Dollars, talking about why local currencies. to hear Bob talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, can you Okay, we're just going to put them on the screen. I think we're going to get it to work with them. 
That's a terrible idea.
school dollars. How do we get this? Oh, raise up. Great. So, in Philadelphia, we have this program called Equal Dollars Community Currency. You got a little background on it in the video um, that Bob and I were talking about why we're doing what we're doing. And, you know, we don't really have, um, it's been a very organic process. I started, it's five years ago now, March 10th is my five year anniversary. We now have over 2,000 members and we have about 300,000 units of equal dollars in circulation in the Philadelphia area. Um, and it's becoming really popular, um, primarily because people see it as a way that they can do a community service, get an equal dollar gratuity, and now they can put food on their tables much cheaper than they can by going to a grocery store. And um, they're do people are doing it because they know in order to get the equal dollars, they have to do something for someone else. They have to primarily give back. Um, and so this is kind of like a little presentation that I do to help people. We talked a little bit about this in a video where U.S. dollars are often scarce, but there is an abundant abundance of untapped local energy and unused goods. And as we talked about in the video, there's labor, there's food. This was a, done by the local newspaper just to talk about loss along the food supply chain. 52% of the food that's produced in this country, only 47, 52% of it gets wasted, only 47% of it gets eaten. And so that's a lot of waste. Um, and so part of what we've done, and we just happened to stumble upon this model as we were trying to figure out how we're going to give value to the equal dollars because unlike the Burke shares, you can't exchange out of it for U.S. dollars. I can't go into a bank and give them U.S. dollars to get equal dollars. That's not how the equal dollar system works. So we really struggle <laughs> or work really hard to create the value for the dollars within the system and the people who participate and or the businesses. And we have more individuals participating than we do have businesses um, at this point. But then we say, what if there's a way you could use what you already have, like a few hour, extra hours a week, gently we use clothing or furniture, some type of skill or talent, like sewing, carpentry, or electrician, um, to get what you need, food, medication, clothing, household services, all while helping your community. Equal Dollars Community Currency, that's the way to get it done. Um, equal Dollars is a local interest-free currency that taps into the undervalued and underused resources to benefit communities and add vitality to the local economy. How it works. First, you just sign up. You agree to some guidelines that you're going to exchange goods and services using Equal Dollars. You're going to perform um, service in your community. And the strength of this community currency is based on the efforts of its members to continually trade and honor equal dollars within a community. Um, and we're going to give you 50 equal dollars to get you started. Now it's time for you to put your equals into action. Now there are some things within our system that the program itself sponsors. So we run a food market. And we run that food market right now in three urban communities in the city of Philadelphia. Um, and the areas in which we run the, um, the food markets are in areas that are, um, there's a high uh, level of poverty in those areas. And um, the people there don't have a lot of US dollars. So we have our food markets in those communities. This one community in particular, Strawberry Mansion, and they like to consider themselves a community that's primarily off the grid. They really, really like the whole, whole idea of um, equal dollars community currency. And they have people in their community, <laughs> I mean, they are really, um, they're, doing, they're running el errands for the elderly. They are helping keep business corridors clean. 
they are doing mentoring at elementary schools. And so these are the kind of these are the kind of things that we give equal dollar gratuities for. And so the food markets are open every Monday. So this is how we rope you in. You, you get your 50 equal dollars, you like them, you're using them, and then you're like, oh my goodness, I don't have any more. How do I get more? And here's how. Um, you can offer your services to other community members, like we talked about earlier. Um, we have some organized volunteer projects. Uh, we last some um, last year we started an urban farm. We we converted one of the many many vacant lots in the city of Philadelphia into an urban farm, which we're really excited about. And the food that was produced on that particular farm is made available for 100% equal dollars. Um, you can participate in tutoring and mentoring programs. We're actually working in another community in Philadelphia called South Kensington. And that area is a little different, not such a high rate of poverty, but very, we would like to consider that community a community of activists. And so they're working with us because they like the idea of being able to thank their volunteers with the equal dollar gratuities. But what, we do, what we're doing with them is we're having a keeping it local day. So they are organizing a group of people to come out and clean the business district. And then like a week or two later, we're coming back and they're working with us to get the businesses in that area to agree to accept equal dollars of the people in the community um, on that particular day. And so this is a strategy that we're just using now to get more businesses involved in the system. I got my five minute warning. The other thing you can do to get um, equal dollars, you can buy and sell goods and services on our online marketplace because we do have an online system. And in conclusion, equal dollars helps community be stronger. It keeps um, money local, supports small businesses, promotes community spirits through service, um, encourages healthy lifestyle and eating habits among our members, empowers our members, um, promotes a greater economic independence. Sign up today. <laughs> You have this presentation on a handout if you're interested in taking it, if you want to see it, or you can watch it online. I also have several copies of the DVD if you want to take that, and some samples of our money. I don't know if there are questions. So we can take some questions while we're setting up the next presentation. No questions? I must have did a good job. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So have grocery stores in Philadelphia been trying to give the uh, expired food and so forth to your food store.